Hi, and welcome to Code Corner from Mayfield Renewables. This is a video series that we do where we like to dive into uh, different codes and standards as they relate to the solar and solar plus storage industries, and really just kind of take a look at one individual section or one individual topic and, and talk through that one. Today, that's gonna be the 2023 National Electrical Code and specifically 705.30, and then it, as it pushes us back into 240. 705 is an article that is about connections of our distributed generation sources like solar and energy storage to systems like utilities. So that's the, the overall article. And 705.30 is specifically titled transformers. So how do we integrate transformers into these systems and protect them properly is what we're gonna talk about today. So let's look at the language in 705. So 705.30F specifically, you can see the language here. So this is the language as it appears in the 2023 code. And the highlights are just changes from the 2020 version. So in 2023, we are setting the stage for transformers and how we're going to protect, protect the secondary side of those transformers. So number one there, you can see it talks about the primary and secondary side of the transformers. This is an important one because as we use the words primary and secondary to describe transformers, very often we get these associations with voltage levels as well. And in a tr more traditional electrical installation, we might have a commercial industrial uh, application where the utility is coming in at 480 volts, but we have single phase loads that we need to run at 120 volts. And so we'll take a transformer and we'll transform the 480 volts, the 277 slash 480 coming in from the utility, and we'll transform that down to 120 slash 208 for the loads that we wanna run. Pretty typical scenario. In our PV applications, excuse me, before I walk away from that. So in that case, we're talking about the primary side being the 480 side, the secondary side being the 120, 208 side and we get this association with transformer the primary being the higher voltage side and the secondary being the lower voltage side now when we talk about a grid direct pv system we are seeing a lot of situations where installers are putting in a 480 volt inverter so the output of the inverter is 480 volts but the utility from the, that you're trying to connect to is 208 volts. So now we're trying to take two, 480, step it down to 208 to go to the utility. And so now we are kind of reversing that, that uh, power flow. We're review, reversing the, the way that we're looking at the voltages. Uh, we're stepping it down now to go over to the utility. So what number one here is saying is that the primary side will be considered to be the side connected to the, the side with the highest available fault current. So in our PV direct systems, and that's what I'm gonna focus on here today, in our PV direct systems, that's gonna be the utility side. And so we're gonna have, we have future code corners and, and future topics uh, talking about trans, more about transformers specifically, but for the purpose of looking at this code and understanding it, we're gonna call the utility side the primary side, the solar side the secondary. Now that, can get a little confusing and that can, because in this scenario that I just presented, the inverter, the solar side is the 480, the utility side is the 208. So now we are you know, reversing what kind of that traditional uh, system would be. So the primary side would be the lower of the two voltages, the uh, secondary would be the higher of the two voltages. So that's where trying to use primary and secondary and kind of keeping with that and, and keeping that in mind with this definition that code has for us is an important one to do. So once we have that established, transformer secondary conductors are gonna be uh, protected per 240.21C. So that's gonna establish what we're, how we're gonna protect the secondary side of our transformers. So let's go ahead and jump over to 240. So 240, Article 240 is overcurrent protection. So talking about protecting conductors and equipment. In this case, so we're talking about protecting the equipment side of, of these. When you read 240, it does talk about the, specifically when you look at 240.21, it talks about the need to protect uh, both the conductors and in this case, the transformers. And so there are requirements for both and we can use the same overcurrent devices, we can use those same uh, protective devices to 
meet both requirements. We just have to look at both of them and make sure that they're both satisfied. So first off, let's just talk about 240.21 in general. So this is the, lo the location for overcurrent devices. A talks about branch circuit conductors. B talks about feeder taps. Feeder taps is a uh, common, common application for our interconnection methods. That's covered in 705.12 as well. So we have videos that talk about that. So uh, just we're oftentimes going to 240.21. C, as you, see, as you see here, is talking about transformer secondary conductors. So what this section is saying is that we can protect the conductors coming out of the transformer. The protection doesn't necessarily have to be right at the transformer itself. So we can have some distance, similar to what we do with taps. We can have some distance before we have that overcurrent protection device, uh, and we're gonna have to meet those requirements of C1 through C6. So we'll go through, I'll show you what C1 through C6 are in general, and then we'll kind of look at one of the specific examples. One of the big things here that I wanna point out though is that, that second, the last sentence in 24021C. So section 240.4B shall not be permitted for transformer secondary conductors. So if you go back and look at 240.4B, that's the allowance that says we can protect conductors with an overcurrent device rated higher than what the ampacity of the conductor is. Pretty common application in sizing conductors. What this is telling us though is that we can apply that here. So what that means is if you install a overcurrent device, the conductors have to have the an ampacity of at least what that overcurrent device is. We can't round up to the next size uh, as is allowed in 240.4B. So keep that in mind when you're going through sizing your conductors. All right. 24021C1 through 6, you can see the list here. There's six different uh, ways or six different scenarios, and the rules are going to apply differently for the for them. Um, so, you know, one protected by a primary overcurrent device. When you read through that uh, section, it's our PV systems uh, typically, almost universally, I, I hate to say always, but I have yet to find a situation where number one applies in our in our PV systems. So looking at number two, if you have the conductors not more than three meters or 10 feet long, we have installation, excuse me, industrial installations for number three, outside conductors for number four, uh, secondary conductors from a feeder. So that's gonna point us back to 24021B. And then finally, conductors, secondary conductors, not over 25 feet or seven and a half meters. So you're gonna have to go through, depending on the length of your feeder conductors and understand you know, which of these are gonna apply. All right, so I wanna take a second and look at a very specific case, number six here where the conductors are less than seven and a half meters or 25 feet. It's a common application for putting in transformers and having that overcurrent device. If the conductor length is less, if it's that 10 feet length, then you can use number one, but this is a pretty common application. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and what the requirements are. So there's actually three subparts of this. So let's look at number one first. And what the code is telling us is what we're gonna determine what the minimum uh, conductor ampacity needs to be based on the protection, what is protecting the primary side and the ratio of primary to secondary on the transformer. So if we, we are going to have a overcurrent device protecting the primary side, so we would take, so that's gonna be a value that we're gonna use. We're gonna use one third of that value based on this code reference. And then we're going to multiply that by the ratio of primary to secondary. So again, this gets back to the beginning of the, of the talk here. The primary side being the utility side, the secondary side being the solar side in this case. So if we were to have that scenario where the inverter, the solar side is 480, utility is 208, primary is the 208, the secondary is 480. So the ratio of that is 208 divided by 480. So that's 0.433. So you're gonna take that ratio and you're gonna multiply it by a third of the rating of the overcurrent device protecting the primary. That becomes the minimum ampacity for those conductors. Now you also need to look at what the, in this case, inverter is producing, what that output circuit is. So we're gonna have requirements in 705 as well for that. And so 
that you need to look at both of those. And so we need to just make sure that we're sizing our conductors that it at least handles the, the production that the PV array is producing, but also has a minimum size based on what this is if you're using the transformer. So you gotta look at both as kind of the, the answer there and make sure that you are sizing your conductors properly. And again, this is getting into, so the 240 has multiple rules for protecting the equipment and the conductors. We're making sure that we meet both those rules. Whatever results in the larger of the wire sizes, that's what you're gonna end up using. So if you, then if you go on, uh, number two and number three, so number two talks about the secondary conductors terminating on a set uh, single circuit breaker or a set of fuses and then also that those secondary conductors are protected by physical damage or protected from physical damage, I should say. So those are, that kind of rounds out those rules. And again, one through five are specific for different applications. So if you, if you meet those requirements, then that's where you should look and apply those rules for the transformers. All right, so that was you know quick overview 70530 and the 24021C requirements. Uh, at Mayfield Renewables, we have a number of courses available on our website. So if, you know, the, on the topics similar to this that I encourage you to take a look at, we have anything from, you know, one hour to three plus hour courses that you can take all having NAPSEP credits and just covering a variety of topics. And then, of course, if you have any questions or comments, love to hear back from folks. If there's a topic you love, want to see us talk about in Code Corner, you know, feel free to reach out. Or if there's you know, questions on this or other, um, other topics, feel free to send us an email and see if we can help you out. Thanks a lot.